India currently operates 22 nuclear reactors, producing a combined 7,380 megawatts of power and contributing just under 2% to the nation's total energy output. Among these reactors are 18 pressurized heavy water reactors, two boiling water reactors, and two pressurized water reactors, each playing a significant role in shaping the country's diverse energy landscape. Besides these operational reactors, Kakrapar Atomic Power Project Unit 4 attained criticality for the first time on December 17, 2023. Furthermore, as a crucial component of India's extensive energy revolution, construction is underway for four pressurized heavy water reactors, each with a capacity of 700 megawatts, and two state-of-the-art pressurized water reactors, each boasting a capacity of 1,000 megawatts, which is moving us closer to a sustainable future. Additionally, the government has granted administrative approval and financial sanction for the development of 10 indigenous pressurized heavy water reactors, each with a capacity of 700 megawatts in fleet mode. Ever wondered why India is betting big on pressurized heavy water reactors instead of pressurized water reactors or boiling water reactors? The key lies in India's three-stage nuclear program. Let's unravel the mystery behind this strategic choice. In the 1960s, the critical decision-making process orbited around the selection of either light water reactors, including PWR and BWR, or the pressurized heavy water reactor. The critical technologies required for PWR and BWR, including uranium enrichment and the fabrication of thick pressure vessels, presented formidable challenges. In contrast, the essential technology for pressurized heavy water reactors centered on heavy water production. The mastery of the intricate and energy-intensive process of uranium enrichment was perceived as more difficult and strategically sensitive, rendering it less accessible. On the flip side, the production of heavy water from natural water through a chemical exchange process appeared more feasible, aligning with the technological infrastructure available in the country at that time. PHWRs being of pressure tube type construction did not require large and thick pressure vessels and, therefore, were not difficult to manufacture in the country. The familiarity of Indian scientists and engineers with research reactor Cyrus was also a factor in favor of the selection of PHWRs. Besides, a heavy water plant was also operational at Nangal in North India, producing about 10 tons of heavy water per year. India's natural uranium reserves are limited. Hence, it is essential to prioritize the efficient utilization of naturally occurring uranium in the first stage reactor of the country's nuclear power program. The PHWR type reactor holds key advantages over PWR and BWR counterparts that favors India's nuclear program. To delve into these advantages, it's essential to familiarize ourselves with fundamental nuclear reactor terminology, including concepts like moderator, fissile material, and fertile material. A moderator is a material placed in a nuclear reactor core to slow down neutrons produced from fission. Moderators are made of materials with light nuclei, like beryllium and graphite, that slow down neutrons through a series of collisions. By slowing the neutrons down, the probability of a neutron interacting, uranium-235 nuclei is greatly increased, thereby maintaining the chain reaction. Fissile material is material that can undergo nuclear fission when struck by a neutron of low energy. Fertile material is a material that, although not fissile itself, can be converted into a fissile material by neutron absorption. Heavy water is a type of water where the hydrogen atoms contain an extra neutron, making it denser than regular water. The pressurized heavy water reactors employ heavy water as a moderator, utilizing deuterium, an isotope of hydrogen containing an extra neutron instead of regular hydrogen found in normal water. Heavy water demonstrates superior efficiency in reducing neutron energy and absorbing fewer neutrons compared to regular water. This feature establishes heavy water as an enhanced moderator in the reactor system improving its capability to moderate neutrons more effectively. Consequently, this improved moderation increases the probability of initiating fission in uranium-235 without the need for fuel enrichment. Enrichment involves enhancing the concentration of fissile uranium within the fuel. This distinctive characteristic of PHWR-type reactors is advantageous for India's nuclear program, 
enabling the use of natural uranium instead of enriched uranium, as required by PWR and BWR reactors that use light water. Furthermore, PHWRs offer the capability of refueling while in operation, maintaining high capacity factors. The domestic availability of natural uranium can sustain the pressurized heavy water reactor's power program up to a capacity of approximately 10,000 megawatts. Beyond this point, fueling additional reactors becomes challenging, and the program would be difficult to sustain. To address this issue, sodium-cooled fast reactors will be utilized in the second phase. The initial phase of India's nuclear power program revolves around the utilization of natural uranium in pressurized heavy water reactors, employing heavy water as a moderator. These reactors not only generate energy, but also produce fissile plutonium. In the second stage, plutonium-239 retrieved from reprocessed PHWR spent fuel, combined with depleted uranium, mostly containing uranium-238, will be utilized in a sodium-cooled fast reactor. These reactors, with their breeding capability, can generate more fissile material than they consume, ensuring a consistent supply of nuclear fuel for power generation. This is critical for sustaining a continuous supply of nuclear fuel for power generation. The effectiveness of this conversion, whether with uranium-238 or thorium-232, depends on the number of neutrons generated in fission. This concept is expressed by the reproduction factor, denoted by eta, representing the ratio of neutrons produced by the fission process to those absorbed. Besides one neutron to continue the fission chain, additional neutrons would be used to convert the fertile nuclei to fissile nuclei. This factor must be greater than two, allowing for parasitic absorption of neutrons in other structural materials. It's important to note that India has the potential to generate up to 300 gigawatts of electricity using depleted uranium, sourced from the spent fuel of pressurized heavy water reactors, which could sustain for approximately 100 years. The third stage is currently in the development phase, and challenges related to the presence of protactinium-233 leading to the formation of uranium-234 needs to be addressed. Additionally, the fissile material required for the third stage must originate from the second stage. The utilization of thorium is a key consideration, given India's substantial reserves of this resource. India is also developing advanced nuclear technology to address its expanding power needs and ensure the security of its growing energy demand. India is actively engaged in the development of accelerator-driven systems that will utilize natural uranium and thorium as fuel. The Department of Atomic Energy and Fermilab are collaborating on the design of these systems. The project will be the world's first ADS reactor and will produce green electricity from India's thorium reserves. Scientists from Fermilab and Baba Research Center will be part of the team. Furthermore, India's nuclear endeavors extend to diverse initiatives, including the development of thorium-based reactors, advanced heavy water reactors, fast breeder reactors, nuclear fusion research through the ITER project, and the exploration of small modular reactors. These efforts collectively aim to ensure long-term energy security and optimize the efficient use of nuclear resources. Creating informative videos demands a tremendous amount of effort. Your support is crucial in fueling our motivation. Kindly subscribe to TechnoWorks, enabling us to consistently produce insightful content on science and technology.